It's great to have your company here on Business Weekend. Now, if there's one thing boards, executives and others need to pay attention to, that is the breakthroughs in robotics that will come with the incorporation of artificial intelligence. From being machines that can be programmed to perform so, mo so many linear functions, robots in the future will adapt to their environment and make judgments for themselves for better or for worse. Well, right now, after the national robotics strategy by the government, Australia is determined to be at the forefront of all of this development. But what of the ethical issues? Well, one of the country's most foremost experts on robots and the chair of the peak body, the Robotics Australia Group, Dr Sue Kay, I spoke to her a little earlier. Australia is really good at actually the most modern form of robotics, which is what we call field robotics. So those are robots that can operate uh, often outdoors in unstructured environments, uh, often needing to operate side by side with people, so they need to be extremely safe and robust, and even offering operate in very remote areas where they might not be able to communicate with satellites, and so they have to be able to make a lot of decisions on their own. And that is an area where we have a lot of talent and where we've developed a lot of technology. So I can understand with Australia's remote sort of, if you like, geography, that makes absolute sense. Yes. Are there any sort of breakthroughs? Is this coming out of the CSIRO or are there, is there industry that's actually also developing this? Uh, it's both. So CSIRO developed the navigation technology that underpins those huge robot mining trucks that you see, which yes. we call autonomous load haulage vehicles. I think what, but there's some 700 of them in the mines in the Pilbara right now. There's a lot of them now. So they're becoming sort of, if you like, first nature. They're safer. Yes. Uh, they quite clearly can be controlled yes. and they can work 24-7. Yes, that's right. And Australian industry is very good at building smaller versions of those machines for uses not just in mining, but also in agriculture, in emergency services, in defence. Uh, and we're now looking at how that can expand into other areas like construction, uh, oil and gas. There are a lot of use cases for those new types of robots. And I think I've told you before that I've seen this happen in the mining industry, underground mining, yeah. where robots are used to go to places where human beings, beings should never be. Yes. And the fact of the matter is that broadly you try and get your robot out safely, but if there were an accident, yes. at least no life is lost. Yeah, because it's just robots. And while we can get quite attached to the robots, uh, obviously we would prefer that robots get sacrificed in those very dangerous locations. And usually that is the first use case for introducing robots. It's to be able to remove people from harm's way and actually have the robot do a dangerous task. OK, so then add artificial intelligence into it. As I say, at the moment, those functions are relatively what I'd call linear, fairly straightforward. They're basic functions that have been programmed by human beings with the software, but it's when those robots start to have decision-making of their own that the ethical... Uh, dilemmas may start to appear. That's true, um, although robots at the end of the day are still programmed by people and the big advantage now of generative AI and tools like that is that it makes it much more easy for us to communicate with robots. So rather than having to program a robot, you can actually just verbally tell the robot what you want to do. But in most critical uh, areas, there is usually always a human in the loop in the decision making and so that's always an important consideration when you're designing a robot so that people can have confidence that it will behave in a predictable manner and that there, there won't be difficult outcomes. Australia has a, a lot of safety regulations in place that would ensure that, that you are not uh, likely to put in a robot that could uh, cause any harm to a human being. So what is most important and what is most valuable when constructing a robot? Is it actually constructing the brain? In other words, the software and the programming of that robot, or is it the actual building of the physical machine? Oh, it's a bit of both. I mean, it has to be that combination of software and hardware, but I think the the exciting times that we are in now is that with the advances of generative AI, we can make those robots much more clever and responsive to humans and accessible even if people aren't computer scientists themselves. So in other words, there's great opportunity for Australia to create the hardware, but there's also the chance for Australia to create the software. We've got the skills in both those areas. Yes, exactly, that's right. And do we have enough of the people 
to build the robots on a scale where it can be globally commercial. That's the other thing that Australia has always struggled with. Yeah, at the moment, Australia is actually trending pretty well in terms of us being able to keep our t talent in artificial intelligence here in Australia, but that's always subject to change depending on how attractive it is for those people to move overseas. But, I mean, I think we're very fortunate that we live in such a beautiful country that a lot of people are happy to... Uh, to come to Australia and, I guess, lend their skills to the country. So it's not a problem for us at the moment. There is a global shortage of that talent. Uh, but I think the other opportunity with generative AI is that we can now train people up to uh, be helping to develop those robots much more quickly than we have in the past. Many thanks for your time. Thank you. And that's it for the program this Sunday. Up next is all the latest news right here on Sky News. Business Weekend returns next Sunday, but of course you can keep up to date with all the latest business news with our daily program Business Now, 4.30pm Eastern Time and via our website skynews.com.au. I'm Ross Greenwood. Thanks for your company. We'll see you next week.